So this is, this is the key. So Kemi Baynock triggers the, what we could call the racist left to go into absolute meltdowns, and they just don't know how to handle it. So the key part of this is she says that um, what's amazing is how you, you talk to some people in Labour, they're still pretending it's 1955 or 1948. It's as though they have to pretend nothing has changed in order to justify their own argument. It's destructive for young people because what they hear is the message that it doesn't matter what you do, people are going to try and stop you. And she says the argument I make to people is that we've all been victims of crime, but we don't all think our country is institutionally criminal. So she's saying, yes, racism exists, but we're not in an institutionally racist country. So this, this, just, puts, this just checkmates the left because they don't know what to do with her. And you've probably seen on Twitter people like Dr. Scholler, who said that Kemi was somehow enabling white supremacy and pushing back the argument of, for anti-racism by a black person going for prime minister. She's told her to crawl back into her mother. So it draws out the absolute horrific people on the left and we saw also the fox killer, Jolyon Morn, whatever he's called, yeah. saying that to, will the Conservatives accept a brown candidate, meaning Rishi. Omar Jalili did a similarly stupid tweet the other day. Even, an, even a Leb Dem parliamentary candidate did a bizarre tweet about Suella Bravman where he said, get your immigrant offspring face off my TV. So it draws out the bizarre, I know, it draws out the horrific left who actually are now the racists, okay. who think they're not, just, just because the Conservatives have moved past that. They're just saying... What, what are we going to do on Brexit? What are we going to do on tax? We don't like wokeness. And the, the left just thinks that Tory voters won't accept, you know, a woman of colour. But of course they will. Can I just say, it's not all the left. No, no, it's that element of yeah, the left. Yeah, the far, far sort of... Yes, that's what I meant. I think left. that's right. Yeah, because um, what I found really great about what, uh, her, Kemi's piece is that um, she's saying, I, just because you're white, you're not inherently racist. And it's like... Oh, my God, thank you for <laughs> stating the obvious, which sadly needs to be stated. Um, and what I thought was uh, incredible, though, was that she says that her belief is that meritocracy and aspiration are a winning combination. I'm like, oh, my Lord, I remember when I thought meritocracy worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love it. She's still got that dream. I'm like, you lived that dream, Kemi. <laughs> it's like a TED Talk. It's like listening to Anthony Robbins, isn't it's it? It's fabulous. She, she's impressive. I also, do you know I was at the House of Lords the other day, Mark? Oh, you, you, are, to, you are, uh, you're living your best life, aren't you? Due to an admin <laughs> error. Uh, well, then they let Leo curse him, which sort of marred it for me a little uh, bit. That would have provoked a security situation. I, I didn't realise Kemi was speaking. I mean, there's ISIS and there's Leo <laughs> Kurtz. I know, I know, calls were made. But I was as close as to Kemi as I am to you on Amak. She did a speech very, very near, and I, I got to see her up close. She's very, very uh, smart and funny and brilliant. Do you want to move on? No, no. I'm just doing I'm my Kemi party political broadcast. I listen to you. I'm, I'm, I'm like all good women. I can do several things at one time. She, you could tell she was <laughs> nervous. Her hand was even shaking. I could see before she went on stage. But you know what it's like before you perform. But then as soon as she got on the stage, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was calm and she was brilliant. And yeah, I was back in Swella initially. But when I could see she couldn't make it, I switched to Kemi. Yeah, you switched all the way there. I